All right, so I'm super excited about talking to you all here at GDC. And I've spent the last few weeks building a bunch of sample games and a whole bunch of game engines, and I can confidently say that it is the best time ever to be a game developer. Our tools are better, our platforms are more refined and stable, and our means of distribution is, well, more open and available than anything we've ever had before. So, you know, game engines are big and powerful tools that work across multiple platforms. But sometimes they may seem to be a bit big and clunky for mobile. Things are not always associated with game engines, or like you know, being small, providing optimal performance, and especially leveraging platform-specific features. Now, of course, you want to be small because great small games get more downloads than great large games. And you want to be optimally performant because, of course, higher performing games get more fun per watt of mobile power, get better ratings, more playtime, and more downloads. And leveraging platform features can be key for success. Especially on Android, we have a huge set of game services that help you to grow, retain, and yet even monetize your user base. Google Play offers a feature to help you called multiple APK support to allow you to post different APKs which target different hardware versions. We're going to cover two of the mo most important ways in which you can use it, which is texture formats and ABIs with a few different game engines. We'll also talk briefly about integrating Google Play game services, and that's it. I only have five minutes, and I've already used a minute and 15 seconds. So, the basic rules for multi-APK are that we need to create APKs that have a different version number with a distinguishing manifest characteristic that allows Google Play to filter correctly. Now, version numbers are used for priority when the same device can support multiple versions of the same app. Multiple APK goal is how to generate an APK with different version numbers, different texture formats, and different binary targets in each engine. It's always a comfort for me to work with Cocos 2DX. I think it's because, like Android, it's free and open source. This game engine delivers small binaries with high performance and it's loaded with tools to get you in the game from the start. Internally, Cocoa supports just the older formats, but since it's open source, it's relatively easy to add support for others. Now, you'll need to use whatever texture packing tool you might be using to generate sprite sheets with each format. It'll also be up to you to pack the correct formats with the correct builds. All right. It's really easy to find that manifest and make changes, at least. Here's an example of declaring a build that requires DXT for Google Play. It's super easy to also do architecture-specific builds because it just uses the NDK. So the default make file looks like this. By adding the v7a ABI, we get an ARMv7 build. And this gives us an x86-only build. By putting multiple ABIs on the, on the line separated by spaces, we get a fat build with both binaries. And Android chooses the best automatically. There are lots of features that show how to integrate Google Play game services with Cocos 2DX. And it's easy because we have a C++ client. The Cocos team created their own sample here, showing leaderboards and, and, and uh, achievements, as well as turn-based multiplayer. So let's switch to Unreal. Now, texture formats are really easy with Unreal. You just select which texture format you want to build against. However, Unreal won't automatically edit your manifest for each texture format to allow you to use this to differentiate multiple APK and Google Play. To do that, it's really simple. You create a manifest requirements additions text file and add the sports DL texture tag. In my case, I've added the one for ASTC low dynamic range, which is what is currently supported by high-end Android devices. Now, for ETC2, one needs to require OpenGL 3.0 in that APK because there isn't a hardware extension for it. It'd be great if someone did a patch to make Unreal do this on its own. Unreal has built-in support for Google Play game services, just leaderboards and achievements, and also support for licensing APK expansion files, add mod batter ads, and in-app purchases. You can add your Google Play app ID here along with mappings for leaderboards and achievements, and follow the blueprints example given with Happy Chicken to show how to integrate them. If you want to do a build for x86, x86-64, Android extension pack, you'll need to rebuild the editor from source. Not hard, just a bit more work, and after all, being open source is pretty cool. Unity, on the other hand, will nicely add the texture format into the manifest file for you, but if you select ETC2, you'll want to make sure you manually set the required GLES version to 3.0. To do this without selecting the ES3 path in Unity, you can take advantage of manifest overriding. By creating an Android manifest file in the plugins directory that contains the to use this feature file for GLES version. This is also how you can add any customizations you might want to in the manifest. You have to go to player settings to switch the ABI type for Unity, which today just supports ARMv7 and x86. Unity doesn't have any built-in support for Google Play game services yet, but fortunately we've written a plugin that supports almost all Play games features. And if this were in a lightning talk, this is where I'd go into an in-depth discussion about how to use this stuff. There are many other options too. Game Maker and Corona have great Google Play game services integrations, with Corona also integrating our real-time liquid fun 2D particle simulation. Default from King allows for amazing real-time changes in a cloud-based development environment, and Autodesk Stingray has powerful integration with professional 3D tools. Remember, have fun, think small, leverage play game services, and package the best binary for your users. Thank you. Here's how to reach me. And please welcome to the stage, Nathan Camarillo.